it's Pyram King, and I'm super excited to bring to you an update to Legends of Barovia. In this update, we're we'll going to be talking about Argen Vost Holt. It's one of my favorite locations in all of Barovia. This is a massive, massive update. A week ago, we released the free PDF guide to this location, beautifully edited by Jesse Winter. If you're interested in that free PDF guide, I'll put a link down in the description. Now, this week, I've spent most of my time working on this full rebuild. This is from the ground up Foundry Adventure module that includes six brand new beautiful uh, maps by DM Andy. I selected that ghost look and feel. As you know, DM Andy makes a variety of maps on his Patreon, different looks and feels, rain, fog, everything. I went with the ghost look here for that, but if you're interested in those other maps, including the 8K high resolution ones, I'll put a link in the description down below to DM Andy. We have over 20 Theater of the Mind maps brand new. I did brand new voice acting for this location as well. We have beautiful tokens made by Tisu. All of this here we're going to go through in uh, detail as we go through this. Really excited about showing this to you. If you are a uh, supporter, donating supporter, helping me bring these guides, these free PDF guides to the community, this is a thank you gift. I've taken everything in that PDF guide. I've put it into a foundry module, did all the walling and lighting. Uh, DM Andy's donated his maps. Uh, in there. Uh, we have the Theater of the Mind maps, all of that in there. So you don't have to do anything. You just plug and play. It is, there's a link to that down below. And also, if you're not a member, if you want to be a donating member to this project and getting all that extra content, you can. There's a membership link down below. Now, before we jump into the maps and look at it, I really wanted to talk about Argenvost Holt because it's such a, a pivotal location in Legends of Barovia. I mean, it's an epic tragic location. I mean, we have this huge stone manor keep in ruins. It's the home of the legendary Silver Dragon Knights. Lord Argenvost himself was a knight who was also a Silver Dragon. Strahd killed him, beheaded the dragon, and took the skull, the dragon skull of Argenvost, back to Ravenloft as a trophy. I mean, how disgusting. I mean, if you don't hate Strahd now, you will definitely hate him after you visit this place and you learn all the horrible things that Strahd did. Unfortunately, when I look at uh, Curse of Strahd, the book, and rules is written, it's not a lot there. You've got the, you know, you've got Vladimir and Sir Godfrey and some Revenant Knights that are pissed off in this epic location, but there's really no meat on the bones. And so what we did in Legends of Barovia, we added in some epic player handouts to kind of tell the story of what happened. These are actually PDFs. You can download those for free, but they're also included in the Foundry Adventure module here that we can look at where the players can download them and read them. They're really short and they give you little glimpses of the past of what happened here. Uh, and I really wanted to make this location not just about combat encounters, but weave in both lore, social encounters, and some quests to give this place you know, a really interesting and fun experience that your player characters and your players will will never forget. And so what we've done is taken Lord Vlad, uh, Sir Vladimir here. He is the head revenant. He's the one that's come back and he has seeked vengeance on Strahd for centuries, right? And through his hateful, uh, hate-fueled uh, uh, revenge, he's brought back his other revenants. Now, what I've done here is we know that Argenvost Skull is, well, it's not here. And it's actually in Legends of Barovia, it's in Berez with, with the uh, Swamp Fae Baba Lazaga. It's not in Ravenloft. But the, the Revenant Knights don't know this. This is what the player characters have to find out. Sir Vladimir knows that if the Skull of Argenvost is returned to the mausoleum in Argenvost Holt, there's a mausoleum here, that Argenvost will be put to rest in the beacon of Argenvost will light and remind all revenants of the oath they took and that this mission, this vengeful mission that they're on needs to be put to rest. The, the knights have, have fought valiantly and it's time for the knights to finally rest, to not come back and be resurrected over and over again for centuries to, to, to make Strahd's life miserable. Vladimir knows this. Vladimir does not want the skull returned. He wants to and he's lived for 400 years. He is he is myopically focused on making Strahd's immortal life miserable through his own immortal life, and he's dragging everyone with him on this. And there's no convincing him otherwise. 
So if the players bring the Skull of Argonvoss back here and try to stick it in the mausoleum, not only is there a glyph of warding on the mausoleum, but there's revenant guards and the whole revenants will come down on those players like a ton of bricks. It's going to be really difficult. However, there is a way to return that Skull of Argonvoss. See, not all of the revenants and the spirits, there's actually some spirits and ghosts here, are content with this horrible life. Lady Laganda, which is uh, Argonvost's adopted daughter and a knight, her spirit is tethered here. She was murdered the same night when her father, Argonvost, was killed. And also the second in command, Sir Godfrey, they want to be put to rest. They want to finally rest. They want to see Lord Argonvost's skull return so he can be put to rest. But he's, they're only two people, and they won't be able to convince Vladimir. However, there are five others, four other revenant knights but that, are, but that are named, and a ghost here. And if the players can convince them, they will go to Sir Vladimir. And Sir Vladimir, who was as loyal as he is to his lord, Archivos, is also loyal to the order. And when his knights come to him, his respected knights saying, we've spent four lifetimes, four centuries of vengeance, we need to finally rest. We need to allow Lord Argonvoss Skull to be returned. He will listen to them. But you need to convince enough of them. Now, each one of these revenants, these four revenants, and this ghost has something that they need to personally fulfill before they feel comfortable to be before they can be put to rest, before they're willing to go to Vladimir and say, allow Argonvoss Skull to be returned. Each one of them have a unique quest. Now, you only need to convince in the PDF guide, I said you only need to convince three out of the five of them, but it's up to you. In, in your particular game, you want might have only two out of the five, or you could have five out of the five. It's really up to you. Obviously, each one of these things is going to be requiring the party to do something in order to convince that revenant to go tell Vladimir, hey, it's time to, to, to lay down, uh, allow Argonvoss call to be returned, and so that we could all finally, finally rest. So as we go through this, we're going to be talking about each one of those quests uh, at each one of these locations and each one of these individuals. This is all covered in the free PDF guide, by the way, that's in the link in the description down below. Now, I'm really excited about going through this, so let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to jump into Foundry right now, and here we are in Foundry. And what I'm going to do is jump back and forth uh, between uh, DM's, DM Andy's gorgeous battle map and the Theater of the Mind maps. What I really like to do when I'm running Foundry is I like to use what I call Theater of the Mind Maps, or images which you put your player tokens on, and it creates a common frame of reference that all the players can see while you're playing online. And this is great for social encounters, it's great for exploration, it's great for when the players just want to talk among themselves for taverns or you're in particular rooms. You can even run combat encounters. I've actually run combat encounters in these as well, and they work really well back and forth with the battle maps. So I'm going to go back and forth with these. All of this, by the way, you can find in that uh, Argon Voss Holt uh, version 11 foundry for 5th edition and system agnostic. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So when you first get here, you, you're here in front of, I got my player token, there's me right down there. Uh, we're here at the, at the dry, giant dragon uh, statue in front of the manor of the old keep of Argon Voss Holt. And all, the, all these journal entries are included. It tells you there's some read aloud text here and stuff here. Anyway, we're gonna get into Argonvost here. Here's the beautiful map by DM Andy. And where am I? I gotta put my player character on there. Where am I? I gotta be here. Here we go. There I am, right there. So you come up here uh, into Argonvost, so open up, you're in the main for you here. You can see that I've got all the notes here explanations even pictures here there's the the tapestry of the dragon in here there's a picture of this you can show it to the players it's really cool so they can see oh there's the old tapestry of in here in the dragon hall of 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 Argonvost in here so there's a lot of images in here to share with the players some great read aloud text so as the players just go through through here and you can see it's kind of creepy and dark they're going to come in here and the first location they might run into is the old ballroom. And the collapsed ballroom is really cool because the collapsed ballroom, by the way, it's something I did with Diamandi's map that I really like. As I put a layer in here, you can see actually you're underneath the spider webs. See all these spider webs? You can actually go underneath them. It's really, really cool. I really think that's really cool. 
you're going to see these revenants over here, and they're fighting this other revenant. There's this other kind of weird-looking revenant here. Well, that is a spider revenant. That is actually a new creature that I added here. And so let's give you a little bit of background on what's going on here. A little far away from here, uh, southwest of Argenvoss Holt, there's some ancient ruins, and there's a spider queen there. She's been secretly tasked by Strahd to capture revenants throughout Barovia as they're being resurrected, and she turns them into her minions, mindless spider revenants who can actually spider climb, they can actually shoot webs. They're kind of a half revenant, half spider. Uh, they're pretty creepy looking. Let's let's take a look at one of them. I've got four images of them in here, These of these spider revenants, and here they are. Here's one of them. Let's click on one. There they are. So these spider revenants are attacking the revenants. So when the players go into the ballroom, they can see this kind of spider revenant that's kind of up on the wall, shooting down webs, and the, the revenants are fighting this thing. And the players are going to have to figure something out. The revenants aren't going to be attacking the players. They're trying to deal with the spider revenant. Do the players side with the spider revenant? Or do the sp players side with the revenants? This creates this, this kind of moral quandary the players are going to have to figure out here. I also have a theater of the mind map for this here. Uh, in the collapsed ballroom, so you can actually play this out in Theater of the Mind. Here they are. You've got the, the revenants down here. You've got the spider revenant up on the on the wall, you know, shooting down webs. I mean, it's an epic, really, really cool scene. From that scene, if the players uh, help the revenants defeat the spider revenants, what that does is trigger that all the revenants will be neutral. So you, you, the revenants will tell each other, hey, these, these people helped us kill the spider revenant. By the way, if this thing goes crazy, I got two other spider revenants that will reveal themselves down here and they'll they'll be coming out of the walls to join into this into this attack here. So it could be an epic battle if you want it to be. So this will put the, the the revenants, I would say they're kind of on their edge, neutral on edge. That so if you do anything wrong or if you piss them off, they're definitely gonna come after you. But at this point, the revenants now, if you help the revenants defeat those spider revenants. They're going to be okay. They're going to be neutral with you. It's like, hey, these guys, we don't know who they are. They're going to suggest, by the way, these revenants will suggest that you go meet with Vladimir Horngard before you do anything else. Or perhaps with the uh, revenant priest that we'll show you here. Now, if you go north up here, I got another really cool room. This is the Dragon Den. And what's really cool about the Dragon Den here is this is kind of a foreshadowing where you have... Uh, Argenvoss, the spirit of Argenvoss, uh, display himself in the flames. The fireplace kind of lights up, and one of the, the flames turn into Argenvoss's spirit to try to tell the players, find my skull, return it here, light the beacon, remind the revenants through me, the skull of Argenvoss, for the revenants to stop this. Now, I did this in Theater of the Mind Map. I'll show you that here. We got the Dragon Den. There's me down at the bottom. And what happens here? is he actually says something here. So let's let's check it out. You double click on this button over here and he's going to speak to the players. The spirit, you can see the fire here. He speaks to the spirit. Here, here we go. My knights have fallen into darkness. Save them if you can. Show them the light they have lost. So he's going to tell he's going to tell them that, you know, my Knights have fallen into darkness. Save them if you can. Now, what's interesting here is if the players start to try to fight this flame thing, this flame spirit is not here to fight the players, right? If the players attack it, it's going to turn around and do 4d10 worth of, of, of uh, fire damage to the players. And I have a fire trap here. I don't know if it's set up to 4d10. Let me just double check that quickly. My, my triggers, I don't want it to do too much damage. Oh, I have 8d8. It's 4d10. Let me just click, uh, change that really quickly. Sorry. See, I fix this stuff on the fly. I'm just so amazing that way. All right. So the way this works is all the player characters are in this room. All you have to do is click this fire trap, and this is what happens. So you attack the fire, the flame spirit in there, and all of a sudden it bursts into flames in the room, and you just double click this. Room catches on fire, and what's going to happen here is watch. The end. 4010. Fire damage has been done to me. Or whoever's in the room, whoever any player characters in this scene is gonna have this fire damage from this this fire uh uh dragon spirit exploding. You have some other interesting rooms in here. 
Um, there is a scene for the uh, um, for the dining hall in here. We have a theater of the mind scene of the dining hall in here, and there's some uh, statues in here that if you look at them, they can create fear uh, in there. And you can read about that here. It talks about the statues in here and how that works. Uh, it creates a psychic damage and, and potential fear. We also have this really cool area back here is the chapel. So if you look at this chapel, we got it all lit up. And in the in the chapel is you've got this guy here who looks different than the other knights. And this is the first knight that's going to give you one of those quests that I talked to you about. And this is uh, Sir Pius, the Righteous. And I actually have that in a Theater of the Mind map. And, you know, he has actually a welcome. If, if, if the players had helped the Revenant Knights fight the spider... Uh, spider revenant uh he'll he'll welcome them he'll he'll say he'll be very very nice and welcome them here he'll say this and i've got another button up here welcome to the chapel of mourning we have not had visitors of the living for some time and of course if he's not nice they're not welcomed he's gonna say this you have crossed the threshold of the Chapel of the Morning, uninvited. So, Speak now. Or so you can certainly see to die. You can certainly see that uh, you know you've got these little tech. Now you can read these yourself if you want to. And then I have the full quest in here. So what's going to happen is he's going to ask this quest. If you want to restore, remember the quest I talked about. There were five of them. This is the first one. Sir Righteous, before Strahd became a, a vampire, he, he was friendly with the Order of the Silver Dragon. Sir Righteous had gifted the, the, uh, the um, icon of Ravenloft to Strahd, which is now in the Chapel of Ravenloft. But the, the, the Sir Righteous, the pious, he was the clerical uh, warrior priest of the Order of the Silver Dragon. This is him right here. He's saying, Strahd's not worth it anymore. Go to Castle Ravenloft, get the icon of Ravenloft, return it here to where it belongs. And if you do, right, I will not only, uh, I will not only uh, to, to tell Vladimir that he needs to, to, to stand down, uh, you've, you've done what I needed to do before I can be put to rest, but I will also teach you four of my spells. He is actually a very, very powerful priest uh, that has a bunch of spells that he's willing to teach the player characters if they do this task with him. They got to go to Ravenloft, bring back the icon of Ravenloft. He's got a bunch of spells that he's willing to teach the players. So that's the first one. Now, if you try to mess with him, there's two other revenants over here that will just go to town on the players. So you're going to be fighting three revenants. One of them is a spellcaster. So you don't probably want to do that. But if you want to hear the quest, you can push the quest button and he will go, my voice acting of him, he will go ahead and read that quest to you. Now, if we head outside here, there's a dual door right here and head outside. We are going to be in the chapel. You can see also, I think, yeah, you can go underneath this tree. It's kind of cool. Uh, you're in the you're in the, uh, the the cemetery here, and we've got a again a theater of the mind map of the cemetery here, uh, so you can explore the cemetery. And then we get to the dragon mausoleum, which is in the corner of the cemetery. You can see that right over here. Okay, so you got the dragon monastery. Uh, the uh, mausoleum, the dragon mausoleum here. Now the problem here is there's a revenant here. They're not going to let you in. Whether you have the skull or not, there's no way they're going to let you in. And if you fight him, he's going to call more revenants. Two more will show up and then more will show up. It's going to be a bloodbath to try to get in here. Whether you have the skull of Argenvost or not. And all of that is spelled out right here about trying to get in here. On top of that, there is a glyph awarding here. So if you try to open up this door and you got your player characters here, you got a little trap here, just like you did before. All you have to do is double click on here and I'm gonna take some damage here. It's not gonna be good. I think this is pretty serious damage. It might be 88 worth of damage. Let's check it out. Yeah, 88 worth of damage. So you probably don't want to be fighting these revenants. You probably don't want to be trying to get into this mausoleum. You need to bring, you need to convince Vladimir. 
All right, let's go up to the second floor here. And what you're going to see in in the um, on the maps is I've got these arrows in here. These red arrows tell the player that if you stand on this red arrow, it's a teleportation. This will take you up uh, to the next map. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go up to the next map. And there we go. We've reloaded the next map. And you can see that I am up on the second floor. So the down arrows will take you down a floor. Up arrows will take you up a floor. That's automated through Monk's active tile triggers. So are those buttons, by the way. That's all Monk's active tile triggers. Now, the second floor has a couple areas pretty, pretty interesting. First off, we have these rooms to the south here. And uh, I've got a theater of the mind map for that as well. There's two rooms here I'll show you. And these rooms are kind of, this is the whole side of the of the keep that has kind of fallen away. And down below here, you can see how Diamandi has done this. Uh, he's kind of made it out of focus. It shows you that there's depth there. Characters, if they could fall off the edge, they could, could fall off and suffer uh, 1d6 or 2d6 worth of damage. However, these rooms, these ruined chambers, um, you have a chance of a spider revenant coming up there, and we've got a theater of the mind map in here. So you can do a theater of the mind map. There's actually a total of of four of these these chambers on the side, uh, on the second floor and on the third floor. They're all listed in here. You have a chance of a spider re revenant coming in if you search the room. You have the ability to find things, uh, weapons and stuff. It's a scaling DC check, so alchemist fire, a crossbow bolt plus two, stuff like that. Uh, and that scales up there, but I've got the the revenant in here too So if you're gonna have the battle with the spider revenant kind of climbing up the side grabbing your leg or something You can have some kind of epic showdown with one of the spider revenants What I wanted to do in these rooms on the side is constantly have that spider revenant threat as a reminder and And you'll find out later in about the spider revenants through one of the knights who's gonna ask you to, to help them uh, Which is Sir Fortis so you've got one of the quest guys already. So here we are on the second floor. If we head over to the other side over here, oh, by the way, we've got in here, we have a uh, black pudding that'll come up out of the uh, out of the, the um, bathtub in here if you're not careful. So you gotta be careful in there. It's pretty cool. Now, if we go to the other side here, you're gonna run into, and you might run into her first on the second floor or not, is this one and this is a really important room because this is the one that's going to explain the quest to you uh and i've got a theater of the mind map of here it's a pretty it's a pretty sad story uh and this is the spirit of lady lagonda so when you get into this room you're going to notice that there is a portrait of a picture up on the wall uh, there it is it's up above over the fireplace of this beautiful Knight. It's kind of faded a little bit, but this beautiful female knight there. There she is. You're also, if you go through the closet, you're going to find this here. It's female uh, padded armor made to fit underneath chain or plate mail. And if you have a female character and they wear this, they're going to get a plus one to their armor class. But it has to be worn. It's either just a plus one. It's just a padded armor plus one padded armor but it can also be worn under chain or plate mail to give you a plus one bonus if you're wearing it under chain or plate mail. But this was Lady Lagonda, uh, who was um, a Lord Argivost adopted daughter, uh, uh, personal, personal padded leather armor. Now, if the players, they're gonna see that this is a female knight's room, they're gonna see the picture on the wall, they're gonna see, they're gonna find this, this armor, they might have read the the players might have been to to the abbey they might have also read the book uh in here and i'll just show you really quickly because it's a player handout they might have actually read the book the legend of lagonda which is right here now this book tells the story of her uh about being the daughter of argonvost and finally being killed and it and she was the one that has it has she has the raven uh the symbol of, of ravenloft uh which is hidden in in the uh, in the abbey uh in here so it tells her story in here so if the characters will put this together hey this there's this female leather armor here there's this picture maybe you could say oh there's lagonda's name is mentioned under the picture maybe it's inscribed in the picture frame what the player characters do as soon as they realize it's lagonda she's going to appear we've got uh 
her right here and we actually have her quest which she tells she's going to tell the players what's going on here and she's going to tell them about this suffering quest in which these five other people need to help convince vladimir to stand down so i'm going to go ahead and play that for you right here so you can actually actually hear it and if you push that button right here she's actually going to stay there This once noble otter of the silver dragon now dwells in disgrace. And starred by the will of Vladimir Hongard, whose heart is driven by deep-seated hatred. My own spirit, too, is bound to this place, trapped by Vladimir's malice, yearning for release. Vladimir, consumed by his loathing for Strahd, broods in his throne room, and he is a formidable and merciless foe. Heed my warning, as I have warned others, do not underestimate him. The magic entwined within my father's Argenvost bones hold the key to liberating Vladimir from his hatred, offering much deserved peace to the knights. It is cruel that those who valiantly fought in life are now compelled to battle in death against such darkness. Even if you retrieve my father's skull, accessing the mausoleum will be no easy task. It is heavily guarded by Vladimir's knights, and any attempt at entry will swiftly provoke a fierce response, rallying all the knights to its defense. Yet not all are consumed by the hatred that fuels Vladimir's vendetta against Strahd. A few knights and spirits, delusioned by this endless cycle of rage, stand ready to unite with Sir Godfrey. Together they could persuade Vladimir to cease his hostility and allow my father's skull to be rightfully placed in the mausoleum. These few souls, wandering the halls of Argenvost Holt, may lead their support in name of Argenvost. Seek out Sir Pius the Righteous, Sir Fortis the Defiler, Sir Amoric the Romantic, Sir Sonnet the Poet, and the Ghost of Sister Mercia. Their aid could be crucial in your quest to bring peace to this accursed place. Now you can see here that this really kind of spells out what's happened here and also who these five individuals are here that you can do their individual quest. We already visited on the first floor Sir Pius. He wants that icon of Ravenloft returned. Doing so, he's not only going to teach you some spells, but he will stand up with, with uh, Lady Laganda uh, and uh, Sir Godfrey to convince Vladimir to stand down. So that all happens here in this room. There's an item, obviously, to find here. Uh, really cool theater of the mind scene uh, in here. And, and it's, it's a somber, certainly a somber uh, moment in here. Now, when we're back up here on the second floor and we go around, I'll just move my my guy exploring through here. Here I am. We get into this room here and this is the uh, north guest room. We got another theater of the mind map and this is where they're going to run into Sister Constance here. Now, she also uh, will will speak to the players here. She was the sister assigned from the Abbey during the Great War centuries ago to take care of the Knights of Argenvoss. She was like the nurse here. However, when Strahd came and killed Argenvoss and killed Lady Laganda in her sleep, she was here. She was murdered by Strahd as well. So her bones are in this room, along with some personal items, including the Morning Lord prayer book here, her prayer book, which players can pick up and take, which has got all the Morning Lord prayers in here, which is pretty cool. Um, and she, she will tell the players she just wants her bones taken back to the Abbey to, to be put to rest so she can be finally buried properly at the Abbey where she should have been buried. And if she if the players do this for her, take her bones back to the Abbey, she will go and stand with with uh, Sir Godfrey and Lady Laganda and others to tell Vladimir to stand down. So that you have this theater of the mind scene here. Now if the players go up to the Northern Hall, I've changed this trap here to be if the players try to open either one of these doors, they're going to be facing uh, these these phantom warriors that will 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 emerge here. We have uh, two different rooms the players can explore. Again, phantom warriors in both the rooms to the east and west will attack the players. And we have a theater of the mind uh, map for those, which is these uh, knights quarters here. 
So you can run this both for the East Knights Quarters and the West Knights Quarters. There's some things to find here. In here, it's mostly a combat encounter. You got a potion of vulnerability. The other one, you have some torches, long sword, a maul, an oil flask, a chain shirt. Nothing too important in here. Mostly, you've got the trap at the doors and the uh, phantom warrior. So this is really going to be just combat encounters at this end of the second floor over here. So if we head back up, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna head up some of these stairs. There's a couple of we're gonna go up these stairs over here. And this will take us up to the third floor. And here we are on the third floor. Now the third floor, if they, the players come up here, they're gonna probably head into this room first. And this is the room in which you're gonna run into Sir Godfrey. And this room here is the knight's room. And there we have Sir Godfrey here. And this is a pretty important room because Sir Godfrey is also going to tell the players, uh, and he has a long, uh, little speech here. You can re you can you can show this to players, or you can actually send it to chat if you want to, or you can actually hit the quest a button here, and he'll read it. Uh, do the voice acting. My voice acting will actually read it to the players, and he's telling the same thing that in a different way that uh, the spirit of Lady Laganda did. It's like, hey, we want to be put to rest. Vladimir's pissed. He won't stand down if you convince these other. Knights and the ghost, Sister Mercia, also uh, Sir Pius the Righteous, which we also met, as well as three others. Vladimir will stand down and let the skull be returned. But you need to do these things. And it's known as the Suffering Quest. I actually have it listed here in detail to bring back the skull of Argenvost here. There's the skull, skull of Argenvost here to bring this back. So uh, he's going to tell you that. But there's two more things that are very important about Sir Godfrey. There's actually three things. The first thing is, if you bring back the skull of Arnhemost, he will give you the Sunblade. The Sunblade is in the beacon of Arnhemost. It is protected up there by a glyph of warding that, that if it's triggered, it just reforms again. It's almost, it's pretty much impossible, almost impossible to get that Sunblade without completing this quest. Because Sir Godfrey is the only one that can release the Sunblade. He was charged with protecting this. The Sunblade was gifted to Lord Argenvost, and it is up there. So if you do that, there's a whole thing about the Sunblade, he will gift it to them. If you're running the Fey Quest, uh, you know the blue gem that restores uh, uh, the Water Fey uh, in, in uh, the Swamps of Brez at the Stone Circle there, you can place that in several locations. One of the locations happens to be in Argenvost's hole. So if the blue gem, if you decide to hide the blue gem in Argenvost's hold, he will give you the blue gem. He'll tell you where it is. It's hidden in Lord Argenvost's chambers. There's a there's a trap door that's also locked there, and he will also give you the poem that you need to recite uh, to restore her. And then you have the 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 blue gem. There it is, of the Fey gem. So if you've decided to hide the the if you're running that Fey quest, you decide to hide the Fey gem here. He will also give to you that. The third thing that's very important about Sir Godfrey here, we got a picture of Sir Godfrey. Where is he? There he is. Let's check him out. He's pretty pretty cool looking. He's one of my favorite. Sir Godfrey, if you return the skull of Argenvost, will also, if you've decided, will be your fated ally. You can call upon him at any time if you're having problems, and he will arrive. He will also arrive at Castle Ravenloft for your final showdown with Lord Strahd. So he could be one of your fated allies. So three things there. He'll give you the, the Sunblade. If the, the blue gem is hidden there, he will release the blue gem. And if he's your fated ally, right? So you need to complete the, the suffering quest, get that Skull of Argenvost back for him to be your fated ally to do those other two things. So this is a pretty important scene. We've got a nice theater in the mind map here. There I am meeting with, you can see me here having a, maybe a little bite to eat. They don't have a lot of good food here at Argenvost Holt. But I'm hanging out here with my buddy, Sir Godfrey, here in the Theater of the Mind map. Now, the next location up here that we'll go to, we have uh, Sir Vladimir's bedroom over here. It's got a bed in here. We got a, a Theater of the Mind map for that as well, right? Right here. Now, in Sir Vladimir's bedroom, there's some items in here. And I, I, I run this in several rooms. The way I run it is like this. Each single player can make one 
a perception check to, to search the room. One check only. And it would be a, a, a wisdom perception check. If the player rolls an 18, they'll find a cold a ring of cold resistance. If it's less than 18, they're not going to find anything. If they roll a 19, they'll find a dagger plus one. If they run a 20 or higher, they'll find an am amulet of health. Every player character can only roll once, and a, only one of these items can be found. So if all the player characters roll under 18, nothing's found. If one player rolls a 19, only that one dagger can be found. You get the idea. So it's like a scaling DC. I have this in several rooms. It's a way of getting a couple of rare items, but you have only one shot at getting it and only one player can roll once. And if you don't, well, good luck, you don't get it. But that's how it works. And you'll see this, this set up in several other rooms like this. Now, also in here in on the third floor, if we go out to the other side, is we're gonna run into another one of those nights. By the way, we have this this uh, bathroom here, and guess what we have in the bathroom? Again, we have that black pudding. So if you didn't defeat that black pudding before, you can defeat him a second time up on the third floor. Now, if we head through this, this, these doors here, you're gonna run into another one of the knights. And then this knight, who is in the upper gallery, is uh, Sir Amoric. Sir Amoric here also will tell you, he's got a button here he can read out loud, or you can actually uh, uh, send this to chat. Sir Amoric uh, was uh, engaged, he had a fiance hundreds of years ago uh, to a beautiful village girl in the village of Berez before it was destroyed, and her name is Marina. Uh, Marina was believed to have Tatiana's soul hundreds of years ago, and Strahd tried to convert her into a vampire. Brother Gregor killed Marina in Berez before she could be converted, and there's a mausoleum, there's a crypt. Uh, to Marina there. Well, unfortunately, her lover, her fiance, is Sir Amoric, the romantic, and he has learned that Marina's crypt has been defiled. She is not put to rest. So his quest to the players is go to Berez, find the ruined church, find the ghost of Brother Gregor, and he will tell you how to consecrate Marina's crypt. And once you do that, and she can be finally laid to rest, her soul can be finally at peace, come back here, he will know that, and he will go to Vladimir and say, Vladimir, you need to stand down, allow this skull to be returned uh, and, and uh, so that we can all rest. We need to end this 400 years of vengeance. So that's his quest. That's Sir Amoric the Romantic. So you got three of them now. You've got Sir Pius, bring back the icon of Ravenloft, Sister Mercia, the ghost of Sister Mercia, take my bones, have them buried properly at the Abbey. I will tell of Vladimir. And now you've got Sir Moric, Go to Berez, find the ghost of Brother Gregor, have Marina's crypt consecrated so she can finally be put, her soul can be put to rest. All right, what else do we have up here? If you head north through this door here and you go up again through these double doors, you're going to find the study or actually the library of uh, Argenvossel. And you're going to find in the library another one of these named knights. And in this particular library, you have Sir Sonnet, the poet. And again, just like before, if you want to have the voice acting, you can click the button, uh, run the voice acting, or you can do your voice acting yourself, or just send the text, the read aloud text here to chat. And I should probably have those in there. The players can't open them anyway. Um, what he's going to tell you is like, Sir Sonnet was in charge of the library of, of Argenvoss, and he goes, if you could be so kind to recover it, because it's been ransacked. All, all of the, of the uh, books have been destroyed or damaged or lost or stolen. Actually, the only one here, which is interesting, the only book here, which is kind of cool because it can be used as a way to try to convince not only Vladimir, I would use this in here, is there's a book here on the ground. You can see it's laying here on the ground. The players can pick it up. This is a really cool book. This is the actual oath, uh, the oath of Celestial that the, the Order of the Silver Dragons took. Every one of these knights read this oath. But what's cool about this book is at the end, very end, every one of these knights, Sir Vladimir, Sir Godfrey, Sir Amoric, Sir Pius, Sir Sana, and Sir Fortis sign this. So the players have this, and they take this also up to Sir Vladimir. It goes, look, Sir Vladimir, you and all of these knights sign this book. This is your oath in this vengeful streak that you're on, you've broken your oath. So this can be 
a great player aid that they convinced the other revenants as well as Sir Vladimir, hey, you gotta let the, the skull return. Allow your Lord's skull return. Allow him to be to be put to rest so that you can be put to rest. Great player handout. That's the only book that's here. But what's gonna happen is Sir Sonnet's gonna say, and here he is, let's take a look at him. He's gonna tell the players, hey, look, you know, what you need to do is uh, if you could find these these uh, six books, they're, they're scattered throughout Barovia. Many of them tell the tale of, of Argenvost, what happened here. There's the fall of Argenvost. There's the legend of Laganda, which is uh, his adopted daughter that players have already probably spoken to her spirit. There's the Battle of Berez, the Battle of Salenka Gates, the Lords of Barovia, and the Song of the Sunblade. If you could bring find these books, bring them back here to the library, I will, I will, my, my, my task in, in life and death has been fulfilled. I can be put to rest. I will go also and convince Vladimir to allow Lord Argavos Skull to be returned. Now, what's cool about these, these books <coughs> is the players don't have to read them if they don't want to, but if the players really want to get in, in woven into the story and what's going on here, they tell about Strahd and Lord Argavos here. The, the fall of Argavos is a, is a horrific story about how Argenvoss was killed uh, and his skull, there's a picture of his skull there, uh, how the revenants came back. It tells the whole story of the revenants and the fall of Argenvoss. It's a really cool book. The Legend of Laganda, which we already talked about, tells her story. The Battle of Brez, another great book. It was the battle that happened right out here and how Strahd betrayed uh, both Argenvoss as well at Lord Argavos, as well as Lord Habsburg, who was the ruler before Strahd, how he betrayed them. Uh, there's a really cool book story about the Battle of Salenka Gates with the Shield Maidens. Really sad story about the Shield Maidens. I really, really love this story. Uh, the Lords of, of uh, Barovia is just the history of all the Lords of Barovia up until Strahd. And the Song of the Sunblade is a poem about the, the Sun Sword. Uh, about the Sunblade, so it's it's really cool. So he wants these books returned. If you find these books uh, and return all of them, he again will feel that his mission is completed and convince Vladimir. Now, some players, uh, some people have been asking me where are these books found. I personally, my recommendation to you as a game master is sprinkle them out through Barovia. Of course, they could be at the bookstore in Vlaki. I would hide some maybe within the libraries of some Burgermeisters. Maybe one of them is in in the, the the library or in the in the in the den of Lady Walker. Uh, maybe in the uh, the Wizard's Tower, the Abbey. But but scatter them throughout Barovia is what, what I would do because it would, it would the players could find them as they're adventuring, right? Or maybe perhaps they know where they are. I wouldn't put them all in one location. So it's really up to you where you want to put them. But those are some suggestions there. Next up here in Argenvost on the third floor, if we go through these double doors, we get into Argenvost's bedroom and we, of course, we've got Argenvost's bedroom in here as well. So here is the scene with Argenvost's bedroom. What's important about this bedroom is really only if you're gonna be hiding if the, the blue gem's here, because the blue gem is hidden uh, uh, in a secret compartment underneath. And if anybody tries to get the blue gem, uh, Sir Godfrey will show up with some revenants and, and say, you guys need to stand down. So this is Lord, Lord Argenvoss's private room. And if the blue gem is hidden, it is hidden here. All right, now let's go back to our player character and they're gonna head up, here he is. He's gonna head up to the, there's a bunch of ways to get up here too. So we're gonna just go up this way. We're gonna go up this stair and we're gonna head up to the rooftop. Now we're gonna come up to the rooftop here. Here I am on the rooftop. Oh, open him up. There I am. And when I come up to the rooftop, there's actually a hole in the floor here. If you if you if you step into this hole, you'll drop down, um, take one d6 of damage. I put a red box around it so the player characters can see where they shouldn't go. This is just a, a visual reminder for the players in here. Um, but what's what I did was really cool is this is a layered roof, so you can actually go under part of the roof here, your player characters can, which makes it really, really cool. DM Andy did a phenomenal job with these maps. Now on here, you have uh, a couple of ballistas up here. You've got some revenant knights up here. Also, you can hear right now, as you get close, you won't hear it now, but as you get close, you're gonna hear, um, the, there's a, right up here, is a, 
um, up on top is a, a statue, a gargoyle of a dragon. It's a gargoyle of 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 uh, Argabost. And if you go by the gargoyle, you're going to hear it speak. It's going to be telling you this this dream, and it's going to just be repeating this over and over. And it's kind of reminding you, reminding the player characters. Uh, that his spirit is still out there. It hasn't been put to rest. Now, if you head down here to the broken ballista, you're going to run in to the fifth and final uh, night, and we've got a scene up here. I think it's this one. Nope, it's this one here. Where you're going to run into um, Sir Fortis at the destroyed ballista. And just like before, Sir Fortis has a mission for you. And this is the one where you're going to find out about the Spider Queen. So he's going to say, hey, look, I'm the master at arms here. I'm in charge with defending uh, uh, Argon Vossel. The layer, he's going to say that, that, the, that this, this Spider Queen has been converting my revenants as they get resurrected throughout Barovia. If they fall somewhere in Barovia, She's capturing them as they're being resurrected and converting them into spider rev revenants and sending them to attack uh, Argonvoss hold. Now, Sir Vladimir dismisses them as mere trifles. He's like, ah, this is no big deal. Because Sir Vladimir is focused solely on Strahd. He doesn't care about these spider revenants. But Sir Fortis, who's in charge of, of protecting Argonvoss hold, says, hey, look, her ruins are southwest of here. Go down there. Kill that spider queen. Bring back her head as proof, as as is." That you've destroyed her to, to end this this act of 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 defiling the the revenants uh and i will right my my, my task is done i've i've protected argonvoss holt uh i am fine with peace now i will go down and tell sir vladimir uh to stand down so uh you have now the five quests sister mercia return her bones for proper burial at the abbey You've got Sir Pius on the first floor to bring back the icon of Ravenloft from the Chapel of Ravenloft back here. You have uh, Sir Amoric, the Romantic. He wants his love, Marina's Crypt, to be consecrated uh, uh, because it's been defiled. Uh, if you do that and she'd be put to rest, he will, will tell Vladimir. You have Sir Sonnet, the poet, who wants the books to be returned because he says, hey, if if... If people forget what happened here, it could happen again. And so these books tell the story of Argonvost, Argonvost Holt, the battles that they fought for those books to be returned. And finally, you have Sir Fortis, the defiler, the master at arms. He says, go kill the Spider Queen in this Spider Revenant menace, and I will go tell Vladimir. So you have all of them here and all of those things going on on here. Now, I didn't show you Vladimir yet because I wanted it for you to, to visit the, the five people that be willing to stand up to Vladimir and saying, hey, look, time to stand down. We're going to go to the the uh, the audience hall here next. This is back on the third floor. So if you're on the third floor, the audience hall is right here on the third floor. And we've got a theater of the mind map for that as well. Let's check that out. Here's the audience hall with Sir Vladimir. And there he is. Sir Vladimir in the audience hall. And let's just take a look at him. He is pretty mean looking. You, you don't want to go up against this guy because not only does he have a, a totally badass stat block. Let's take a look at his stat block right here. I mean, he's got 192 hit points, armor class 17. The guy is, he's got a plus two great sword, vengeful glare. I mean, he's a full revenant with with some serious hit points some serious armor class and some serious damage i mean you're getting punched by that that hit by that plus two great sword he's going to hit you it's going to be hard for him to miss you plus two great sword 46 plus six damage Ooh, ouch and if you really piss him off he's going to call call up six of these phantom warriors so not only do you got him but you got six of these phantom warriors that are going to come to his aid and each one of these guys they're gonna they got spectral long swords they're gonna be just causing all kinds of damage they're not that bad but together you're gonna be that action economy is just gonna be crushing you guys now when you get there he's gonna tell you if you haven't completed the quest th there's two ways this is gonna go down I see if the players have gotten there they've kind of been nice to Sir Pius at the bottom or they've 
killed off a couple of those spider revenants, so the revenants now are kind of neutral. They're going to say, you guys, you need to go see our lord and master, Sir Vladimir Horngard. If they get up there and they haven't done anything to attack the revenants or piss off the revenants at this point, Vladimir Horngard is just going to give them this warning. That's all he's going to do. And uh, actually, I did a, a, I did a voice acting of this. I'll play the voice acting for you. I mean, I haven't played any of voice acting. I played you a couple of them. I'm going to play you this one. I might as well. This is a pretty good one here. So let's go ahead and get this ready to go here. Here we go. <laughs> if you seek my destruction, know that I'm already a dead man. Over four centuries ago, I died defending this land from evil, and my failure has cursed me to this eternal torment. Destroying this body is futile. My spirit will simply claim another, and I will become your relentless pursuer. My damnation is irreversible, and I desire no liberation. If your quest is to rid this land of Strahd von Zarovich, understand my loathing for him surpasses all. He killed my lord Arkenfoss, desecrated his remains, and destroyed our noble order. Strahd has known death once. He must not know it again. His fate should be an unending torment in the hell of his own making, a trap he can never flee. I stand ready to inflict upon him endless misery, yet I will obliterate anyone who dares hinder my vengeance. So you can clearly see... <laughs> He is hell-bent uh, for the last several centuries, just just giving Strahd a freaking hard time, killing his minions, screwing up Strahd's plans. Just that is his mission in life. And so he knows if that, that, that beacon is returned, I mean, sorry, if the skull of Argonvoss is returned and Argonvoss is put to rest and the beacon is lit, this ends his vengeful streak. He'll finally be put to rest. So, so the players have got to convince him, and they can't convince him by themselves, or with just Sir Godfrey, or just with the spirit of Lady Laganda. Several of these knights that he respects, his order, his noble order, has to stand up and say, we've been doing this for four lifetimes, 400 years. It's time to, to, to allow our Lord Argonvoss, who we respect, for his skull to be returned so that he can find peace and that we can all find peace. Now, if you do that, the beacon will be lit. Now, let's go up to the beacon here, uh, to the beacon tower. There's the tower door here, by the way, that's on the rooftop. Uh, if we go over to the, the tower door that's over here, I'll show you we're up on back on the rooftop really quick. I just wanted to take a break so you guys could see, uh, see Vladimir here. Now, this door is shut here and it's locked. It's going to be difficult to get through. We got the beacon tower door. And as the players are, are at the beacon tower door, the arrows are starting to fly down. There are two phantom warriors up in these towers. They've got spectral longbows and they're firing arrows down. They're under half cover or three quarters covers up there. So it's hard to get to them. They're gonna be firing arrows. So getting through the door this way is going to be fairly, fairly difficult. But if you do get through the door, there's also another way through too uh, uh, in there. You're gonna get into the landing that's gonna take you up to the beacon tower. And when we get up the uh, the beacon tower up here, we've got um, this next level here. Actually, I should send my guy up there. What am I doing? He needs to go. He's going to go up. There we go. Boom. And now he's up here in the beacon tower. Right up here is the the top of these beacon towers where these these uh, phantom warriors are firing down their arrows. You can see the Andy's attention to detail. You got some arrows stuck in the wall here. They're firing arrows down if you're trying to get through that door. <laughs> You know, you're down there. Ah, block us with a shield. I'm going to try to unlock the door. <laughs> These arrows are coming down at you. Anyway, that's what's going on there. Uh, uh, there's a trap here. If you, if you, it's kind of weak. If you, if you stand on this, there's a 25% chance the character will fall through to the bottom floor. So you got to be careful of that. Uh, and then 
uh, we'll go up to the very top and we get up here uh, to where the Sun Sword is. Now you'll see the Sun Sword in here and there it is on uh, the Sun Sword. It's protect protected. Let's let's read about this. We've got a, a scene up here. There it is. Player characters are up here in the beacon. And the Sun Sword is protected by a glyph that 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 uh, starts again. Uh, a glyph, if it goes off, it reforms again around the box. Uh, the glyph will burst uh, 8d8 of lightning damage, 20 foot radius. The runes of the glyph magically regenerate after the glyph uh, goes off. So it's a reoccurring glyph of warning. It's going to be almost impossible to get the sun sword out of here unless you do the uh, quest and convince Vladimir then Godfrey will release the sword and give it to you. So there's the sun sword. You can see there's this magic aura around it. I actually have the trap on here. Uh, uh, on here, if you click this glyph of warning, let's go ahead and do it. Just check it out. This is what happens. I just suffered 25 damage on here. Let's see my guy. 500 hit points. That's pretty cool. That's how many hit points I should have. There I am. 500 hit points. Let's go ahead and do this again. Just double click the button, glyph, the glyph trap. And you're, and I just took 32 damage there. So all the player characters up here will hit that damage. You'll realize it's going to be really hard to get this, this sword out of here. Now, once you've accomplished all of this, you've lit the beacon and we've got the information. Here's the beacon here. I'm going to show you the beacon. If you've done everything, you returned the skull of Argenbost. Uh, you've done all the quests needed to convince Vladimir to return the skull of Argavos, the beacon will light, and we have the final theater of the mind map right here, and there it is. There's the beacon. The light is going out uh, around, shining around Argenvoss. The players can see the beacon. They're going to get a plus one bonus to their armor class uh, for this beacon as long as they reside within Barovia. And there we have it. You're, there's the end. The player characters, you can put all the player characters here. This is kind of the conclusion. The beacon at the tower is now lit and it's shining this light around Barovia. You can see the light going around Barovia. I really hope you enjoyed this. This was a really, really big project and update. Again, this is in Foundry version 11, available for fifth edition import as well as system agnostic. Uh, this is a big thank you gift for all of those donating members that have made uh, Legends of Barovia a reality and as a gift, the free PDF guide that's available to the entire community for free it includes everything that you see here in here. Uh, there's a link down below to go ahead and download it. And until next time, may all your roles be critically successful. And a special shout out and thank you to my legendary members.